This presentation will be our second presentation on popular literary devices. We will focus on similes, metaphor, onomatopoeia, and oxymoron. First, we're going to talk about simile versus metaphor. A simile is a comparison which uses the words like or as. A metaphor is a comparison that does not use the words like or as. The sentence, she is as beautiful as a flower, would be a simile because it uses the words as. The sentence, she is like a beautiful flower, is also a simile because it uses the word like. If you eliminate the words like and as from these two statements, you are left with the sentence, she is a beautiful flower. This is a metaphor. We know that the girl is not really a flower, but the flower represents the girl, thus creating a metaphor. Here's an example of simile in a poem. This is from the poem Flint by Christina Rossetti. An emerald is as green as grass, a ruby red as blood. A sapphire shines as blue as heaven, a flint lies in the mud. Take a few minutes and see if you can identify the similes in this passage. The first simile is the first line of the stanza, an emerald is as green as grass. The second simile is the second line of the stanza, a ruby red as blood. The third and final simile is the third line of the stanza, a sapphire shines as blue as heaven. These are all similes because they use the word as to create their comparison. Now let's take a look at an, at ex at an example of metaphor in a poem. This is from the first stanza of William Shakespeare's sonnet 18. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's lease hath all too short a date. Take a minute and see if you can find the metaphor in this passage. This entire stanza is a metaphor comparing the subject to a summer's day. That's it for simile and metaphor. Now we're going to move on to onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia is any word that mimics the sound it describes. So it's sound words. Some examples would be boom, bang, crash, clap, bark, pop, um, and any other sound word you can think of. An example of onomatopoeia in poetry would be from The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded nearly nothing, suddenly there came a tapping as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. "'Tis some visitor,' I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. Only this, and nothing more." So see if you can identify the examples of automatopoeia in this passage. The words tapping and rapping, which both appear twice in this stanza, are examples of automatopoeia because they mimic the sound that they create. Now let's look at an example of onomatopoeia in a nursery rhyme that we all know from Mother Goose. Bow wow, says the dog, mew mew, says the cat, grunt grunt, goes the hog, and squeak, says the rat, Too woo, says the owl, caw caw, goes the crow, quack quack, goes the duck, and moo, says the cow. Can you find the examples of onomatopoeia here? Bow wow, mew mew, grunt grunt, squeak, Too woo, Caw caw, quack quack, and moo are all examples of onomatopoeia. Now let's move on to oxymoron. An oxymoron is a figure of speech in which two seemingly contradictory words are used together for effect. Some common examples are awfully nice, bad luck, random order, original copy, or jumbo shrimp. These words are oxymoron. The two words appear to contradict each other, such as random and order, and original and copy. However, when they're put together, they create a literary device that makes perfect sense. Some famous quotations that use oxymorons would be Mark Twain's quote, 
The coldest winter I ever spent was a summer in San Francisco. Another Mark Twain quote, I have never let my schooling interfere with my education. Simplicity is not a simple thing by Charles Chaplin. Dwight D. Eisenhower, we are going to have peace even if we have to fight for it. And always go to other people's funerals, otherwise they won't come to yours, stated by Yogi Berra. So take a couple minutes and see if you can find the oxymoron in each of these quotes. And that is the end of the lesson on simile, metaphor, onomatopoeia, and oxymoron. I hope you learned something.